Hello friends, it's JJ and Jeff from Encyclopedia Bag. We are back here once again with another video that goes deep into the science of turpon. The Future Cannabis Project video from last week, it's just a treasure trove of knowledge about curing and the development of terpenes. We'd like to share some more of that clip in our comments on it. All right. Kick it, JJ. What makes cannabis great? Turns out time is a factor in chemotype expression. The process of polymerization is magical. Studies show us that when cannabis is cured over time, we do not see an increase in the quantity of terpenes, but we see a measurable difference in terpene profile. Terpenes marry, commingle, and continue to develop and homogenize. The polymerization process takes what are fantastic individual terpenes and harmonizes them in a way specific to the genetics involved. It's like going from mono to stereo in flavor and effects. So we know that during the curing phase, secondary metabolites reconnect to create new compounds not present at harvest. This is when the product becomes unique and stands out in the market. The terpene profile of cannabis will evolve and transform dramatically over time through this polymerization process. One of the studies that we found is a study by Ibina Technology Terpene Study, where they tested the terpene levels of a plant at different processing stages. Here's a snippet from their study as published on Gondrepreneur. Findings show that at the fresh planted state, a cultivar has the highest expression of monoterpenes like beta-myrosine, alpha-pinene, beta-pinene, and limonene. After one week of drying and curing, each of these terpenes decreased significantly. Beta-myrosine content decreased by 55%. While monoterpenes were decreased during the curing process, sesquiterpenes like alpha-humulene and beta carophylline were increased. Sesquiterpenes almost doubled in the ratio from the total terpene content in the data taken after the harvest processes were completed. They've also published data that spans all the way to three months curing. And you can see that changes are even more dramatic for some terpenes, over more than double. That's why we recommend a minimum of a three week cure in terp lock, because that's when terpene development rate has been maximized. You can still cure after three weeks, but there will be new terpenes developing all the way from three to six months down the road, but that becomes more of a preference. For curing, you'll want to make sure that the buds stay at the optimal condition for the whole time. And that's one of the biggest advantages between terp lock versus a legacy BERT method. Going back to the entrepreneur article, many compounds in the plant are highly volatile, evaporating from plants with the smallest change in atmosphere. Monoterpenes have a lower molecular weight and higher evaporation rate. The patterns shown by this research supports our current understanding of the volatile nature of cannabis compounds. The study results also show the significant evaporation curve of some other highly volatile compounds responsible for the cannabis top aromatic notes. This paragraph explains why those who use growth bags and terp blocks share stories and pictures of superior side-by-side -side cure comparisons between jars. The key here is evaporating from plants with the smallest change in atmosphere. But many times, that burp can actually be very big and always a sudden change in atmosphere. In the burping process, you are losing monoterpenes. Those lost terpenes evaporate into the atmosphere and are gone forever. Those terpenes are what separates the mids from the top shelf because they are so fleeting and hard to contain. That's what terp lock is for. With a terp lock bag full of cannabis, the aroma is deep and rich with a thick range of terpenes with a special flair of those delicate monoterpenes. This is because the atmospheric conditions stay constant the whole time, unlike the burp curing method. You have to burp to keep the humidity in check so terpenes can develop, but in doing so, you are causing the monoterpenes to evaporate. It's the lesser of two evils. There's just no way around it. Therefore, terp lock offers not only a slower degradation profile due to the stable atmospheric conditions over time, it also provides the conditions necessary to develop the best terpene profile possible. We'd like to give a special shout out to Future Cannabis Project and Gondrepreneur. You guys have awesome scientists and amazing articles. Thank you for your support of our community. Finally, have a great day and see you all next time on Encyclopedia Bag.